Greetings, I'm going to do a deep dive into every single draw tool that UDoodle has to offer, so grab some popcorn. This is going to be a very exhaustive tutorial, and it's going to cover a lot of things, so please be patient with me as I explain all of this, and feel free to go back and re-watch segments if you miss something. I'm going to dive right in. So I've got the brush tool selected. That's the most common tool used in UDoodle which simply lets you drag your finger to draw. Very simple, very basic. But there's a lot of options here. You'll notice that there's a lot of textures here that are built in. You can select these to draw. I personally like this Egyptian one here. And you can use this color wheel here to do custom colors and even import your own textures as colors, which is pretty cool. That's covered in a separate tutorial called the Color Picker Tutorial, so please watch that if you want to know all about what this color wheel can do for you. Okay, so we've got blend modes here, right here. Now, I'm not much of an artist, so I don't know what half of these do, but you can Google Photoshop blend modes online, and all of these pretty much map up with what those do. So if you're not sure what these do, go Google that and you'll be able to learn a lot more than I can explain here. Okay, we've got this opacity slider which can give kind of a ghostly effect as you're drawing. So you'll see that my Egyptian texture sort of shows up but then the horse here shows underneath it. So opacity can become, come in real handy if you want to do like a highlighter. So if I pick yellow and I was, say, highlighting something in my schoolwork. This would be a great way to do that. And, of course, you can hit the undo in the bottom left to get rid of any mistakes or unwanted markings from your drawing. We have this glow option here, which works best if the opacity is turned all the way up. I'm going to add some red tint here, I guess is what it's called, a glow so, as I draw, you'll notice that there's this red tint around the edge of my stroke, and I'll zoom in so you can see that better. You can see right on the edges there, we've got a red glow effect, which can be very interesting. You can also do custom color with your glow as well, so if I wanted an exact shade of blue for my glow, I could certainly do that. Now you notice that we've got a blue glow. Okay, so let's move on to this tint option that I just saw earlier. This lets you tint one of these textures. So the tint doesn't do anything for solid colors because they're already the color you want. But if you pick one of these fancy textures and you want to say tint it green, you can do that. Now you'll notice as I draw I, it's green or I could tint it blue. To go back to the original, or no tint, do the checkerboard pattern, and the texture looks like the original. Let's talk about smooth edge. If the smooth edge is off, you will get a very blocky, non-anti-alias stroke. So let me show that to you now. And I'm going to have to zoom in for this to really show up, so let's go to the sky over here. And you'll notice as I'm drawing that it's very blocky, no anti-aliasing. And this can come in handy, especially as you do really fine strokes that are maybe pixel sized. But if I turn the smooth edge on and I do some of these same strokes, you'll notice that it looks a lot smoother. And that's because there's anti-aliasing being done, which kind of blends the colors and makes your stroke look a lot smoother. But it can also do unwanted things as your stroke gets really small and approaches one pixel in size. Okay, let's move on to the eraser tool. The eraser tool is very simple. It simply lets you erase things that you have drawn. But there's some advanced uses as well that you can do with the eraser tool. And that is softness and opacity. So let's discuss those now. First thing I want to say before I talk about those actually is that if you notice I'm dragging my finger but this horse is not getting erased. 
So you may ask yourself, hey, my draw tool's not working. Well, when you picked your drawing with this plus button in the top right, I hope you noticed this message here that said drawing tools work on the foreground only. So the eraser, the blur tool, smudge tool, all of the tools that actually modify your image only work on the foreground. So in order to get my horse on the foreground, there's this layers button in the bottom right. I can use that and I can say merge to foreground. So let's do that. And in order to demonstrate some of these advanced eraser effects, I'm also going to need to change the background. And I'm probably going to just make it a blank color. Let's make it a solid green so that you can see this green blend underneath as I use some of the advanced features of this eraser. Okay, I'm going to make him as big as I can make him. I'm going to turn up his softness all the way, and I'm going to make his opacity pretty high so that it doesn't erase a whole lot. I'm going to tap Done. Now as I stroke through my image, you can see that that green stuff on the background is starting to show through. And that's because the eraser is only changing the opacity of the foreground so that some of that background can show through. Now I'll show you what this looks like by tapping Layers button here, and then Layers. You can see that my eraser caused some of the foreground to be transparent, which allowed some of that green background to bleed through. As you turn the softness up and down on the eraser, that will affect how the edges blend through. So now as I draw, there's no blending on the edges, and the green background shows all the way through. If I turn that softness up, then it starts to only make the pixels partially transparent and you get this nice smooth effect on the edges which is really nice looking. Okay I think that covers it for the eraser. I'm going to move on to the eyedropper. This is a very simple tool that lets you tap or drag your finger to change the color. Look at the bottom there as I move my finger the color changes. As I'm on the sky it becomes blue. I can select the white horse or I can single tap the sky and it goes to blue. In order to actually use this color, you got to go back to, uh, say, the brush tool and start drawing. And now it's drawing with the color you picked. That's really all there is to the eyedropper. So let's quickly move on to the paint bucket. I'm going to have the paint bucket fill in with some of this cool texture that I used earlier. You'll probably want to turn the tolerance down so that it's less aggressive. You can see that it works pretty simply. This fills in areas just like a standard paint bucket tool. I actually have a, fully, a full tutorial on the paint bucket tool, so if you want to learn all about the stuff this paint bucket can do, I would encourage you to go watch that tutorial. Always remember, for this paint bucket to work, your image has to be on the foreground. If it's on the background, you'll probably see it fill in the entire image, and then you should be like, oh, yes, I need to put my image on the foreground, and you can use that Layers button to merge it to the foreground. The Calligraphy Pen is a new tool that I recently added for UDoodle that basically gives you kind of like a pen stroke. So as you move your finger faster, it gets wider, and if you go slow, then you get a really fine stroke. If you're using Pogo Connect styluses, then you'll even get a pressure-sensitive stroke, which will give you some pretty realistic effects. All of these other settings work exactly the same as the brush tool, so I don't think I need to cover those. Okay, now we're on the spray can. Spray can is a great way to add some very... Um, interesting spray effects to your picture. So it's kind of like you've got this can of spray paint and you're just letting it fly all over your image, which is pretty cool. Again, all of these other effects here work exactly like the paint bucket tool, so I don't think I need to go over those. Recolor tool is a very interesting tool. It actually lets you change the the hue of your image without actually modifying the pixels. So if I wanted to make my horse pink, I could do that. 
So I have now tinted my horse pink. Pretty cool. The tolerance is a very advanced setting that tries to work like the paint bucket. So let's see if we can get that to work. As we tap on an area, it's going to say, okay, what pixel did I tap on? What color is that pixel? And only pixels that are similar to that color will get changed pink. So let's see if we can make this work. You can see that it's working reasonably well. It's not bleeding outside of the horse. And by using that tolerance, I was able to tint just the horse's head a certain color, which is pretty cool. That should work fairly well on his body. There might be a little bit of bleeding. But now, now my pink texture isn't bleeding into the grass as much. And if you zoom in, oops, there it bled a little bit because that horse texture is very similar to the grass. So you can try turning that tolerance very low. And there we go. Now it's not even bleeding into the grass because my tolerance is so low. So a very interesting way to recolor things quickly is using that tolerance. Uh, do some interesting effects, maybe making part of your photo grayscale. For example, if I go to black, that should make my horse gray. Oh, I gotta turn my tolerance up a little bit. There we go. So now my horse is grayscale, and the rest of the drawing is color, which is kind of interesting. So play around with that, a pretty cool tool, the recolor tool. Again, that only works on the foreground, so be mindful of that. Chalk tool is very similar to the spray paint can, except that it's very more coarse. So it's like you're taking a piece of chalk and just scratching that over your image. Not much else to say there. Smudge tool does some paint-like effects, so as you drag your finger, it smudges the image. You may have used this tool in Photoshop or GIMP or other image editors. It also has the size and softness, so as you increase the softness, it does more of a blend. And as you decrease the softness, it becomes more and more coarse. So with a softness all the way down, it's like, there's no blending at all, and it looks kind of funny, but you can tweak that softness to get the effect that you're looking for. Okay, let's move on. We've got the blur tool. This is a great tool that can blur out text or faces or things you don't want people to see, like this horse back here. Now he's blurred out. You can't see him anymore. You change the intensity, say all the way up. You can really blur him out. But usually the default works pretty good. The scissors tool probably is worth its own tutorial, but I sh I'll show you briefly how this works. If I cut out an image, how about this horse's head? You'll notice there's a preview in the top left. I'm doing a pretty rough job here, but you get the idea as I trace his head. Now I've got an area cut out by my scissors. The way to work with this now is to single tap to bring up a bunch of options. You can cut, which now you can see that green background underneath. Let's undo that. You can copy the area, or you can even paste in what you cut. So now I've essentially duplicated this horse head, which is kind of funny looking. Oh, and now there's this square and circle option. So if you have an area you want to cut out as a square or circle, you don't actually have to draw a circle or a square. You can just kind of do a very rudimentary line. You don't even have to get it very good. And then you can click square. So now I've got a square area. Or you can click circle to get a circle. And then, of course, you can copy that and paste in that just that area. All right, so that's basically the scissors tool in a nutshell. Let's do the clone stamp tool. All right, let's say I want to make a bunch of eyes on my photo. 
The way to do that is to tap and hold on the area you want to clone. You'll notice that in the top left I've got a preview. Now I've selected my eye and one way to do that is just a single tap. Oops, it looks like I was in anchor mode, which is a special mode. So I'm going to redo this properly now. <laughs> Tap and hold that eye. Now I can stamp eyes all over the place. I'll show you what anchor mode means in just a second. You can also just drag your finger to clone the part of the image and you notice that the clone circle moves with your finger. Okay. Let's move, show you what locked mode does. Locked mode keeps the clone stamp exactly where it is so it can't be moved. You can stamp the eyes or you can drag a bunch of eyes. Pretty much using it as a 3D texture there. And let's demonstrate anchor mode. With anchor mode, as you select a point and start drawing, the circle, the clone stamp circle, will always start the same distance away from your finger. So if my finger's over here and I start up, say, to the left middle of the image, see how the circle jumped? Circle is always going to stay the exact same diff ah, distance from your finger, regardless of where you lift off your finger and start drawing again. This has been a popular request for a number of users, and as an advanced artist, you know how this can be useful, probably more than I do. <laughs> All right, we're almost done. If you made it this far, you're amazing. The last tool there is the soft edge tool, which is basically a brush stroke that has a very soft feathery edge. You can see there that it blends nicely. Useful if you want to, say, write your name in a and a very feathery stroke. But now that the calligraphy pen is here, you may prefer that more than this tool. So either one works. I think that covers all the draw tools. I appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. If you have any questions, please email me at support at udoodle.net and have a most wonderful day.